Hey YouTube, how you guys doing tonight? Kevin here coming at you with another awesome video. Okay, as you can see, there's electrical stuff everywhere because electrical is so stressful for everybody. And I'm, I put out a bunch of videos on there helping you guys with electrical and all that type of stuff. So this is going to be another one. Um, and tonight I'm going to be answering a lot of questions that have been asked to me Um through many many different ways forms shapes all i mean you would not believe so um i'm hoping to answer a lot of these questions because i love these questions i love them when they come up because i can answer them i can put them into a video and help not just the person who asked the question but many others who like later on down the road when the question comes up so this is why i do what i do to help you guys out all right so um First off, I did a 12-volt conversion on a bike, and I have a lot of questions about, Kevin, what battery do you use? Um, what did you do? What did you have to do for a battery? Because these things only came with 6-volt, and you just converted it to a 12-volt, and clearly you can't use a 6-volt. Okay, all right, hold on. I got you. I got you. The 6-volt battery used in the Kawasaki KE100s, the KM100s, and the KD100. 100 with all the lights is the 6N6-1D-2 6 volt liquid filled battery okay that's the factory battery if you're going to do a 12 volt conversion you have to modify your battery box to accommodate a 12 volt battery which is typically larger in size than a 6 volt it's just the way it is there is no you can get it um you can get a 12 volt that's really even closer to this, but it's gonna have less amperage and you want the amperage to power the lights. This is a six volt and you can tell it's a six volt by one, two, three caps, two, four, six volts, okay? A 12 volt battery would have six caps, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, okay? Now, typically these batteries right here, when they're new, read 6.47 volts when they're used but still good is right around 6.27 volts which is what this is reading okay now the battery i use for the electronic uh, for the 12 volt conversion you can see it's pretty close in size okay Let's see if i can blow that up for you it's pretty close in size it's a little shorter but you can mount these these are agm batteries there's the battery part number right there ES4LBS. You can mount them this way, this way, any way to where you want. They're not going to leak. They're gel filled. You can see the old caps right here where they filled it. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 volts. Okay. Um, it's roughly about half inch wider and about half inch all. Oh, not quite a half inch, maybe about, um, I want to say, 7 sixteenths of an inch, and then a half on this side. Okay? So they're pretty they're pretty close. They're not quite close enough to fit right in. So you're going to have to do some cutting and maybe some weld, tack welding on your battery box to accommodate this battery. But I believe you have enough room. And if you do it where you center it, now you just, all the way around... You, you could actually, you could make that fit fairly easy enough. So that's the battery that I use, okay, for that conversion. All right, moving right along. Okay, you can see I got stuff everywhere here on this table. All right, the next one was, my horn is not loud, was the one of the most common questions I get, the horn was not loud. So I've got my typical horn here, just a regular standard run of the mill KE100 horn, same as the KM100 and blah blah blah, all the six volt. This is six volt. The scooter ones look exactly like it, but don't typically have the same problem. Okay, so you get your positive and your negative, or your positive and negative it doesn't really tell you on here, so you kind of have to plug them around and see which one. It really doesn't matter. It's a 12 volt negative ground system anyway. All right, so 
picture how a speaker works, you have a voice coil inside here, and then your cone that goes back and forth with the like that, right? Okay, well, same thing. Just instead of having audio put to it, it has 12 volts right off your battery, and that's what gives you your beep, because there's no other thing for it to, no audio, okay? And there's no voice cone, this is metal. So this right here goes in and out at a high frequency to give you the beep, okay? Typically what I find with these when they're low and they've been sitting around for a long period of time, you hear beep, beep, and you, and you keep playing with the button, you keep pushing the button. Come on, come on, work, work. I need you for inspection. Okay. Screwdriver, your two terminals. There's a screw that sticks up right there. See it right there? Okay. That adjusts your tone. That allows the plate to move up higher or down lower. Okay. It, it's the stopper. So you're going to take your screwdriver. You're going to stick it in. You're going to go a quarter turn right. Try it. See if it works. If there's no change, put it back to where it was and go a quarter turn to the left. Okay. If it's still not quite right. Go a half a turn, half a turn, try it, back to where it was, and then a half a turn the other way, and see where it goes. Try it, start off there. You don't want to go too high, and you don't want to go too low, because you'll burn out the coil. But that is how you would check the horn, and typically that right there fixes the horn sound. Um, and, and it brings it right back to, beep, real annoying sound. But... You need it, and it works. So that's how I address my horns. I swap them around. Excuse me. I swap the wires around, see if that right there was the problem. If it's not, I put the wires back. Feel right here on the plate. And sometimes, too, you can, you can massage the plate a little bit around. Because what happens is this part right here sticks inside here in the cone. And it needs to be freed up a little bit. They, it just corroded. And by walking it back and forth. And see if you can move around a little bit. That right there helps it out a little bit. Move. So. Good starting point on your horns. But typically that fixes it. If that doesn't fix it. Then you need to replace it. Okay. So. We have that nailed down one of the other questions is what is the brake light bulb the brake light bulb on these bikes is an 1154 6 volt right there okay and the um, the light bulb for the uh, marker lights that number if I could see it six volt the single filament this is the filament right here is an 1129 these are your directional bulbs are 1129s all right so now we're going to talk about directionals because this is another problem we have a lot of Okay, your regular run-of-the-mill standard um, 263-6 volt Stanley Flasher. Okay, a flasher. These don't always work. I have a lot of people say I tried changing it. It doesn't work. Sometimes you have to take the wires off, rotate them, and plug them back on. Try them the opposite direction. If not, a couple of things that can contribute to your flashes not working properly or not working at all is if you have a low battery. Okay, so try charging your battery first. And a lot of people ask me, Kevin, what's inside these things? Like, what makes them so... Well, I don't know. Let's take a look. Let me see if I can grab a pair of flies real quick. Or well, something I can open them up with. It looks like a set of points is really what it looks like. 
looks like a set of points. And as they heat up, they flash. They go like they break back and forth and cause the thing to blink. And when they blink, they're working. Obviously. Okay. Let's see if I can get a uh, something to pop this open with. Walk a little chunk of it off. It ain't quite ready yet. It's all right though. Showing you guys what's inside of a flasher. If we can get it apart. Without be completely destroying. I don't mind the casing. This thing is so old. It's literally crumbling. Boom. Okay. In here. Is this piece of metal. These two tabs. Power goes to it. And the bimetal. Goes back and forth from the heat. It literally flexes. Like that. Let's see if we can. I don't think we're going to be able to make this one flash because it is in such rough shape. However, can't hurt to try, right? So we'll try making a flash if we can. Sometimes it'll, I, I don't think it's going to be able to flash because these bulbs don't have enough draw on them. But you never know. Oh yeah, I can't even pull power through it. Yeah. This thing's completely shorted out. Well, it was a nice try. Anyway, that's what's inside of a flasher. It's basically a piece of bimetal. Heats up and flexes back and forth. Every time it makes contact, it heats up and then click, click, click. And the reason why it does this, it does heat. So you got positive on the one side, it goes through the other wire into your light. Your light actually creates the ground, heats this up and makes it go. A set of points right there anyway that's what's inside of a flasher that's all it is nothing dramatic okay i had another question can you use a 12 volt light to test a to see if you get power to a six volt battery will it work this is a gear wrench you can see that or not it is a gear wrench 12 um 129d is the model number and yes you can the light will be dim but you can check you can test a six you know you can check and see if you have power to a six volt battery okay yes it would be brighter if it was 12. all right so tonight i've shown you what's inside of a flasher Okay, you can see the crud in there. These things really take a beating. Okay, they take a they take a real hard beating. Typically, what happens is these seals right here fail. They dry up, moisture and water get in there, and as you saw, shorts them out. Okay, so we got that done. I also have I have many many questions that were that have been asked to me. So so far we covered what battery fits 12 volt system 
what are the light bulbs used in the marker light and the brake light. Um, I'm going to give you the flasher number in case your bike doesn't have the flasher number. It's always good to have it. This is a Stanley Flasher 263-6 volt flasher. Okay, see if you can see the, the numbers right there. See that or not? See if I have a clearer one. Yeah, I'll give you the, the spec number right there. It should be a 6 volt 17 times 2 plus 1.5 watt. Okay. Basically, what this means is it can have, um, what do you call it there? Two 17 watt um, bulbs plus the 1.5 indicator light bulb. Is what that means okay so two at 17 and one at one and a half watt and then you can do your multiplication from them it's a very light duty flasher okay remember it's a six volt system and when you convert them you can't use this this will not work all right so moving on so we did the horn we did the batteries we did the flashes okay the next one was how come I can't use my multimeter um, to test the points? Good question. So I got a set of points here on a mag plate. All right. So you have two heavy wound coils. Actually, this I'm gonna put it like it was in the bike. Okay. The points are always up at twelve o'clock. And then you have this heavy coil and this heavy coil right here. So you have two heavy coils. These heavy coils are for charging your battery and for powering your lights. And they are 6 volt together. So each one of these is 3 volts. Okay. Then you have this thinly wound one, which is strictly for your points ignition. Now typically, on a points ignition to test the points, you would put your terminal here on the end. Let me sure I can... Make sure you can see this. Hold on one second. Okay. Let me get my multimeter, which I'm going to set on the um, diode setting. Right there on diode. We're checking to see if it um, opens and closes. You should hear a tone. Okay. And now I'm going to do one to ground, which I'm just going to stick in the bottom here. Okay, so now I'm grounded. Okay, yep. All right, so I got my ground. And I would put the other one on the insulated terminal right here. And open the points. See how there's no change? Okay, I'm going to tell you why that is. This is why you can't use a multimeter to test your points. There is a way, and I'm going to show you that. Okay. Now, the reason for this is because, see, this is a, um, whoop, let me shrink it down here so you can understand this. Okay, so in the circuit, you have this coil right here, which supplies power to your condenser. See how there's two eyes? There's a blue, and then there's the black, the thin black one. I don't think you see that, not right. There's a black wire coming up. The blue wire goes over to your points, up to here, and then the other wire goes up to your coil. So power comes in here, goes up to your coil, and when the thing is charging, making power, then it breaks. Okay, but it can't break before that. And the reason for that is this end right here is grounded. There's a ground on this end. The oh, right here. You can see the ground right there in that one. So the ground is here. The winding goes out to here. And that makes a complete circuit. Okay. So you have your ground on, on this end. And then on this end you have the positive wire coming out. Going up to here. That creates a full circuit. So now... Your ground is from here to here, from here to there. 
And it does that because the coil, it, it's, uh, let me draw it out for you. That way it's a little simple to understand. Okay, so. We're going to keep that up there like that. Let me grab a pen and I'll explain this to you. I just had a whole bunch of pens and now I'm missing one. Hmm. Hold on one second. Okay, got a pen. All right, so this coil right here. That's the coil. If you can see this or not, here we go. Blow you up. Like that. We have, I'm going to put a circle here for the screw. Okay, that's the ground. Then this is the, um, hold on one second, here we go. Right here, you see. Okay, so there's your coil right there, I just drew. There's your ground, which is right here. Okay, and then that's the capacitor. It's soldered up top, and you have your wire coming off, being soldered into there. And then you have your points. Okay. And then this part right here goes to ground. And then on the other end is a positive, which also comes out to here like that, okay? Then from your screw, there's another one right here that goes up to your coil. And then down to your spark plug. Okay, and that gives spark. So you got your coil, condenser, points and um, charge coil all right now the reason why you can't use your multimeter on your points is because the the um, ground goes from here to here through the coil into right there and it grounds it so from the ground it comes around here to here back up to here and that's that's why you can't use a multimeter to see if your points are open and closing properly because or if they're making a connection or not because they're grounded right at the ground on the coil so if you took the coil off this whole thing off then you'd be able to do it but you can't do it with that in circuit there's just no way but i'm going to show you guys kind of a uh a loophole if you will Okay, it's not a hundred percent, but it will show you that your points are working. Okay, and it's pretty neat. I use it all the time, and it's never steered me wrong. I'm going to introduce you guys to a new tool. Not new, actually quite old. This. You're probably saying, what the heck is that? This is called a continuity tester. How does it work? Well, it has a, a test light in here, and then inside here is a battery. Just a double-A battery. Nothing dramatic. Um, you cannot use, you cannot put, use this as a test light. If you use this as a test light, you'll burn off that bulb instantly. It'll pop. But if you take the end, see right here, it's just all one wire. You touch it to the end, it'll light up. Okay? Now, what you do with the continuity tester is simple. You have your, your, uh, your, your nut right here where your two wires from your condenser go up to and up to your coil, you put the, uh, you clamp on your um, alligator clip to that nut. Make sure that it's not touching any other ground, okay? I'm gonna shut the lights down for this one so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, all right, now it's too dark. Okay, hold on. There we go. Okay, you can see the light right there. Now I'm going to put the light on the ground where it's grounded. 
and I'm going to manually open up the points. Well, if you can see this or not, I'm going to shut the light off so you can see it. I have it grounded. See how it gets dim? The points are working. So you can't see that with a multimeter. All right, now I'm going to show you how I did it during the light again. So now I know my, my contact points are opening and closing properly. Um, and you can, you know, like I said, you can do this. Um, you can even check that, like, when the magneto was on here. I'm going to tell you the beauty of this. You unplug the ignition coil. You unplug it up at the frame. You don't even have to put anything in here. You don't have to test it here. Okay, leave this, leave the mag on there. Your coil wire, the little wire, the thin wire. Let me see, um, I don't know why I put my coils. The wire that goes, you know your ignition coil. You take the wire off. You plug this into the circuit, then you ground it. And then you'll be able to turn the magneto and it will do this. Okay? It's the same thing. Like, um, well, I'll simulate it. Okay, so your wires come up at your at your um up in your frame underneath your seat over by your fuel tank. Okay, so all you gotta do is grab it, hook your ground up to it. Okay, just like so. Then you reach down. I'll see if I can. Uh, you really can't see it too well with this light. Um, hold on. Okay. All right, so it's grounded right there. So it's getting dim and light. Easiest way to test it. Okay, so that's how you can tell if your points are open and closing, and you can do that by rotating the magneto. All right, and that's how you can tell if you're getting a, uh, if your points are opening and closing. So that's it right there. It's called the Continuity Tester. They're really cheap. You can get them at any auto parts store or, um, whatchamacallit there, or um, hardware stores. Lowe's has them. Home Depot has them. They're really great for checking and make sure you have a short. You don't have a short. Now I'm going to use this right here and I'm going to show you how to check a, a short. Okay. Regular run of the mill wire. Okay, this is a good wire. Take my cap back off. I clamp it onto one end of the wire. Okay, and then I take the other end. I got a light. This wire is a good wire. Okay, now I'm going to show you what it'll be like on a shorted wire. This wire has an internal break right here. I did that on purpose for this video. And now, nothing will happen. Okay? If you have a short that you can't see any problem in the, in the wires, feel the wire. Go right down the wire every inch of it and see if you feel any obstruction. I can feel like a little um, divot right here. I can feel like a dead space. And then you can feel how flexible the wire is. That's where your short is. Okay? A wire should not be that flexible in one spot. Now, you can't see any breaks on it, but there is definitely a short there. So, that needs to be addressed. The other type of short that you'll come in contact with is this type of short. I don't think you see that or not. If you can blow it up. Right. Yeah, this camera sucks. Sorry, guys. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. But the, right there, you can see the shiny copper, okay? Typically, that is like from closing the seat on top of it or doing something like that. The wire is still good. However, it shorted there and popped the fuse. And that's the short. Now, how do you fix that? How do you fix that? Do you cut the wire all up? Do you cut your wiring harness and solder in a new piece of wire? Do you cut that and put butt connectors Connectors on it. Um, no, you don't. Reason for that is these are not sealed. Moisture gets into them and it craps them out. 
So here's what I'm going to tell you. If you have no broken strands, the wiring works when it's moved out of the way of the short. And everything is all hunky-dory. You you realize that that right there is the wiring um, short. There is a way to fix this. Okay. You can throw a piece of heat shrink over it and heat shrink it if you are if you're able to. If it has a connector on it that allows you to fit a piece of heat shrink over and then you can do that. If not, say it's in the harness and you pulled it out of the harness and you found it. I'm going to show you how to fix that. Okay. Using electrical tape. Now, there, believe it or not, there is a right and wrong way to electrical tape a short. Believe it or not. I know it sounds kind of stupid, but it is. Okay. So here's your short right here. You go to either the top or the bottom. It doesn't really matter. Nice and tightly go once around it. Okay. So you get your, your shorts right here. Then you give yourself a little bit of a leader. Pulling it tight. You want the wiring tight. Go uh, once around the middle. Once around just under the short. Once around under the short again. Once around the middle of the short. And then once around the upper part of the short. Pulling it tight. Every step of the way. Squeezing it like this. Making sure it's a nice tight fit. Okay, that is how you how you optical tape a short. Now, basically what happens is when you go around it once, you go around here, here, and here. And then you do it from the bottom back up again. Here, here, and here. You get two wraps, which is roughly the diameter, or the thickness I should say. The thickness of the insulation on a regular strip of wire. You don't need to keep going around it. Because the more you go around it, water can get into the cracks and crevices and deteriorate your electrical tape. This is vinyl tape and it works really well with two, two uh, loops. And it doesn't look all that bad. But I prefer, my prefer preference is in the heat shrink tubing. But yeah, you know how that all goes. You know, then you have to cut and solder and everything else. I didn't need to cut and solder because all my wires were still connected. There was no broken frayed or anything like that. Okay. So that's that. You can also use your multimeter to check a short. Just put it down to the, the um, diode setting. Which will give you an audio beep. Okay. And checking a short wire. You will have no beep. At all. Checking a regular wire. You'll have a beep. You can also use an ohm. You can put it on ohms. And see if you have a. Uh, if you have connection. I have an excellent connection. If you have zero, uh, uh, five ohms or more, typically you have a short, okay, on the bike. But if you're doing it just from point to point, then you can do either or. Okay, so we covered that. I uh, wanted to go over the lights with you guys. A lot of people ask me, what is the correct tail light for my bike? The brake lights, which is a double filament, is a 1154 six volt light bulb. If you have your directionals, it is an 1129 single filament. That center part is the filament. All right, so let's go over this one more time. We went over points, we went over shorts, we went over horn, we went over the batteries. Oh yeah, directionals and oh, we went over the um, we call it the the directionals, which is the 
263-6, which is a Stanley 6 bolt flasher. Okay. We went over um uh, let's see. Man, I'm trying to think. I'm tired. Don't mind me guys. I, it's been a really long day. And uh we went over what's inside of a flasher, which is a piece of um metal that was back and forth from heat. So you want to make sure your polarity is correct. If your flash is not working, first thing you do is unplug it, turn it around, plug it back in. See if that helps it. If it does not help it, and all your lights are just you're just on, then your problem is the flasher, okay? Or your battery's low. The battery has to be at full power to operate your lights properly. Okay, now, meow. If you guys like uh, Super Troopers, like I do. Okay. So now there's another issue. Okay. When my marker lights are on, you know, when I turn my directional lights on, they oscillate. The right one goes on, the left one goes on. They blink like this. Why are they doing that? Um, the one on your dashboard is supposed to. Okay, your green and your yellow are supposed to go opposite. However... When you turn on your your left directional, your right directional shouldn't flicker at all, and neither should your brake light. That process is called back feeding, okay? So when you turn on your um, directional and you have another light on your bike blinking, whether it be the regular uh, neutral safety light, if you see them two flickering back and forth, um, typically there is a bad ground. And I'm going to show you what that background is and how to fix it. Okay. It's called back feeding. And what back feeding is, is that power source is trying to find a ground. It can't find a ground. So it goes back through the system and finds it through the same, through another open circuit at that time, which would be your other, um, what do you call it there? Your other directional. Okay. So let's get into that. Here is a typical light socket right here. This thing is in excellent condition. We're gonna, for the intensive purposes of this video, we're gonna tear it apart, okay? Tearing it all apart. Then we're gonna take it out. Okay, if we can. Sometimes these come right out, sometimes they don't. Just not enough uh, wire to pull it through. So I'm going to see if I can assist it all over here. Okay, I cannot because I have to get the insulation back further. Yeah, it's always something, isn't it, guys? Always something. Try to do something to do something nice and all just backlights. Okay, hold on one second. Standard reply at the front desk, you know? Okay, hold on. I have a uh, insulation thing here that's trying to hold me back. Okay. Alright, here we go. Good. I just had to loosen up that little ring at the end to give me some a leader, if you will. So I can then pull it through. I can't pull it through the way it was. Oh yeah, a lot better. Here we go. 
All right, so now I have, this is a brand new light fixture, by the way. Okay, so this is the ground. Right here's your ground. This whole metal right here, these sides right here are your ground. If you have corrosion on that because of a bad O-ring, a seal, then that right there is going to cause your back feed. So, like, for instance, I'll show you a socket that was back feeding. Right there. You can see the corrosion on it. Let me see if I can blow you guys up here a little bit more. Look at that. See the corrosion? All right up in here. It's just that white powdery substance. That's corrosion right there because... This seal right here was leaking. And a lot of people think this is the only seal in the light fixture, and it's not. It's, uh, there's actually two other seals that you have to be careful for. On the screws themselves are this little nylon washer. That nylon washer is also a seal. And if these seals right here leak around the screws... Water and moisture will enter the the head um, the tail light the marker light there and cause it to corrode and a sure sign of a corroded um, or one of them over time this chrome will be deteriorated it'll be all blistered up so that's another thing you can look out for and the it's a simple fix to clean them um, I'll show you how I clean them. It's probably not going to be too uh, too nice tonight, but I use WD-40. Stuff works great. I give it a little bit of a blast. Then I use my brass brush. And you just basically go back and forth in there. You're going to have to go through a bunch of times. If you guys have a 12 gauge um, shotgun um, cleaning kit with the brass brush, it fits in these perfectly. But I just go back and forth. All the way around till I get this thing looking pretty darn clean. And you can see how it looks. It's a little wet right now, but there's no corrosion in there. And then, of course, I, I clean it out one more time. I blow it out. And then another very important thing is on this nut up top here, you're going to want to make sure this grommet right here that's in the wiring is not cut or chafed and there's no, no splits in it. Okay, this socket right here is all set to go back on and the corrosion problem will be gone. And this is going to give that light a good positive connection. Okay, so let's go over this one more time. I went over you guys with the back feeding and so you don't have other lights blinking at the same time. This also works for the brake light. Keep that in mind. I went over the um, directionals for you. We went over the battery, the horn, and how to test points and shorts. All right. So um, if you have a wire that is separated or uh, anything like that, if you guys check out my video on the 12-volt conversions, you will see how I soldered and used the proper, um, what do you call it there, uh, heat shrink tubing. I buy heat shrink tubing um, from the folks over at 3M. These are the kits right here. The 3M. I love 3M. Their product is amazing. I use their um, their electrical tape. Um, all the stuff that I have is, is, is 3M. I use 3M stuff. Their adhesives are great. Great company. Um, when you buy, if it says 3M on it, you're getting quality. Okay, professionals like myself use them, and um, they just send me. They have everything. If you can think of it, they have it. Go on their website, check them out. They have 
everything. And this is, a, um, I have two types of uh, kits. This one right here happens to have all the multiple different colors. So what I like to do is if I'm, if I'm repairing a yellow wire, I like to use a, a yellow heat shrink tube. If I'm using a green wire, obviously a green heat shrink tube. Uh, or a ground, I'll use a, heat, a green heat shrink tube on and a battery, you know, red positive And so forth and um, Also to the light bulbs. I prefer I love Sylvania. I think they have a great bulb They're very long last and do not buy the cheapies guys Spend the money. There is a difference get yourself some Sylvanias if it ain't Sylvania it ain't a bulb um, Keep that in mind so that's pretty much what I have for you guys. You guys can use the wire one. This is for a 12 gauge shotgun. Um, you can buff your sockets with them. You know, it gets right in there. And then you can clean them all up nice and make them look all nice and pretty by buffing them out. And then, you know, you, you can see what you're getting when you, when you clean them out. You can see how nice that looks inside there. So, that's pretty much it for the... Oh, nope, that's not just it for that. I want to talk to you guys about something else. That's something else I want to show you. Just when you thought you were done with me. Sandpaper on a corroded bulb. This bulb is not corroded, but if it was corroded, it would be corroded right around here from being in the socket. You could sand it down, just kind of nonchalantly buff it out. And, um, you know, get all the corrosion off of it. Sandpaper works good, and it doesn't matter what type you use. I use I go to the Dollar Tree store, and they have these little sheets right here. They run like a like a fifty to a hundred pack, and they're a buck. <laughs> you know, what I mean, they come just a four hundred. I've got eighty, sixty. They all it's like a whole bunch. Like there'll be a whole bunch of four hundreds, whole bunch of three twenties, whole bunch of sixties, eighties, whatever. So keep that in mind. So that I wanted, I went over that with you guys. How to electrical tape, um, points, ignition. How to test them using a con, um, continuity tester in circuit. Um, there's, there's a lot, guys. There is absolutely a lot, and um, they, there's different companies out there. If you have to go from one end of your bike to the other, there's this pretty cool tool. This is my 10 foot uh, retractable test lead kit, and basically. The test lead, you just keep pulling them out to wherever you want there, and it goes out 10 feet. And then you can just bring on the back end, you just hold it in your hand and reel it back in, and it sucks the wires right back in. So, that's a pretty another pretty cool tool that I use on electrical. As you can tell, I do a ton of electrical. Um, they make a fluke meter, which is top of the line, it's the best meter in the entire world, guys. I use Craftsman. I love Craftsman. This one right here, excuse me, was a little bit on the expensive side, but it has a lot more options. This was 10 bucks. Okay, 10 bucks. Okay, just a nice little Craftsman. Um, it has all the settings you're going to need for your bikes and for doing basic electrical. Even has a cool little stand. So if you're working on something, you need to see it. Now I can work on it and, and see what I'm doing. You know what I mean? So, stuff like that. Um, I have a top-of-the-line soldering iron that I use because I, when I solder, I, I do all that, you know, heavy-duty stuff. And, um... Everything that I solder in my videos, with the exception of the points... Can be done with a regular standard run-of-the-mill soldering iron. You don't have to have that. In fact, that soldering iron on the end unplugs from the side here. It, and really, it's not a uh, this this one's a forty a forty watt, which is which you'd buy at um, well if Radio Shack was still around. But I want to talk to you guys about one more thing. How do you unsolder your condenser? That is some serious solder right there. There is only one soldering iron that I know of that I use to get that type of solder. Now I'll go grab that real quick. A 
I'll show you the solder I use for that. Okay, if you're going to unsolder a condenser, you need a heavy duty, and I mean heavy duty, big soldering iron. And um, this is the one right here I use. This is a gun style. It lights up, and the tip of that right there gets cherry red. I mean, this thing is beefy. This is another uh, CS Craftsman soldering gun. This one right here is dual heat. Um, I don't think you see that now. 150 to 230 watt dual heat soldering iron basically dual heat you know it puts power to both of these electrodes to heat up the solder iron one at 150 one at 230 and um i'm telling you right now this thing is a monster it's heavy and when you when you pull that trigger the lights go dim and you think you're about to induce nuclear fusion i swear to god you can see the mags in there it's pretty heavy duty. And then of course you can just undo all the four screws and change the tip out. But that right there is what you use when you're unsoldering a um, a condenser. You need something that's fast and high heat and this will do it. That soldering iron that's right there, that yellow one, will not do that properly. And get a good connection. Basically... You're going to be cooking your condenser with that one. This just happens so quick. You just heat it up. You pry to it. Touch it to it. And you're all done. It comes right out. And then you can feed your soldering in. And obviously I use flux core solder. It's in the solder. Um, what I use is a small. Um, small thin solder. And I pull it right into it. Works great. <sighs> Excuse me guys. I'm tired. Been a long week. Been a long long week. So that's pretty much all I have for you guys on the electrical tonight. Um, I hope you find some of this information helpful, if not all of it. Um, if you have any questions, um, by all means, please comment below. Please uh, like and share. This is how you do on these KE100s, the KM100s, the KDs, the MC190, the MC1100, the Trail Boss 100, the Trail Boss 90. Um, all those um, older Kawasaki 6 volt. Um, my videos tend to go up to 100 cc's because there's not many, so much support out there. You may find that uh, you find a lot of this information helpful on 125s and 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 up. But um, this is basically I'm focused in on the smaller cc bikes. So that's pretty much all I have for you tonight, guys. A lot of little basic stuff, basically just answering electrical questions tonight, um, and getting a lot of those that stuff that keeps popping up, ham it out, and um, showing you guys some of my tips and tricks to help you further along with your bikes. And um, as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. 125 subscribers, guys. You guys are blowing me away. I love you guys. Um, it's real honor to be able to help you with this stuff. So if there's anything I can do to help you out, if you have other electrical questions, um, by all means, please send them my way. I would love to help you out with them. And um, that's what I do. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe. For the non-subscribers, thank you for watching. Ladies, welcome. Thank you. And uh, you guys all have a great night.